Hi, Sean from Section IO here. In this video, I will give you a quick overview of Varnish Request Flow and how to use Varnish on our platform. We will go over the Varnish Flow diagram to explain how a request traverses the logic within Varnish. Then I will show you how to modify Varnish VCL to add a custom response header so you can see how quick and easy it is to work with Varnish. To finish off, we will look at some more VCO to get you started on caching static assets. Before we get started, I am assuming the following. You have a basic knowledge of HTTP protocol, you have heard of Varnish before and know what caching is, and you have created a Section IO application. If you have answered false to any of these assumptions, I have supplied links in the video description to help you catch up. Let's start with a look at the Varnish flow diagram. This image is from the Varnish docs. The link will be available in the video description below. The diagram we see in here is for Varnish 4, but it's pretty much applicable for Varnish 3 as well as 5. There may be some differences in the name of functions, but the overall flow will be the same. Varnish is configured using Varnish Configuration Language Files, VCL for short. VCL files are organized into subroutines. Each subroutine is represented on the flow diagram with an oval shape. You can call an action during a subroutine which will take you to another subroutine. These actions are represented by arrowed lines leading from one subroutine to another. Every request that is sent to Varnish will go through this logic. A request will first enter VCO receive at the top and then the logic within each block will determine the path it takes until we arrive at the done step. In the context of this tutorial, we'll be looking at VCO receive VCO hash, VCO backend response, and VCO deliver. The VCO receive subroutine is called when a request first hits Varnish. This is where some major decisions need to be made. Some of the most common decisions made here are, do we want to serve a cached asset for this request? Do we want to allow this type of request, perhaps restrict access to certain URLs? Do we wish to respond with a redirect, for example, based on geo lookup, or perhaps HTTP protocol? Do we wish to manipulate this request before either looking up from the cache or sending the request to the origin? VCO hash. This subroutine is called from VCO receive if we would like to try and find the requested asset from the cache. It is here that both the decision of whether or not to serve from cache as well as cached assets are stored. Here you can determine how to split the cache so the correct cached response is served to the user. For example, you can choose to split the cache by protocol and keep HTTPS and HTTP assets separately. You can choose to split the cache by domain if you're running multiple domains of a single Varnish app. You can split the cache by device type if the web application serves different assets based on that device type. VCO backend response. This is where a request has already come through VCO receive and either was a cache miss or was determined to be an asset that is not to be served from cache. This request has then been sent to the origin web application and the resulting response from the origin can be manipulated in this subroutine. Here you can determine if a response is cacheable and how long to cache it. You can also manipulate the headers of the response before it is either cached or served to the connecting client. Finally. We have VCO deliver. Responses will go through this subroutine before being sent to the requesting client. The most common actions performed here are adding or removing headers, such as setting cache control parameters for downstream clients, and adding debugging headers so you can see cache performance or other indicators such as GOIP. Almost all responses will go through VCO deliver. The exception to this is either a piped request or a synthetic response. We won't go over piped and synthetic responses here in this tutorial. For more details, see the Varnish documentation. Let's go over a typical example of a request and its path through VCL. For this example, we're assuming an empty cache and the VCL file is set up for static caching. Varnish receives a GET request for an image. The request first arrives at sub VCL receive and it's determined that the request could be looked up from the cache. The return hash action is called. Varnish performs a lookup in memory and determines that this asset is not available. The miss action is called automatically and the request is sent to VCO backend fetch which then sends the request to the origin. The response from the origin is then passed to VCO backend response. Logic here marks the response as cacheable then sends the response to VCO deliver. VCO deliver then sends the response to the requesting client. 
After this, Varnish receives another request for the same image. Again, the request arrives at VCO receive and return hash is called. This time, Varnish looks in memory and sees the asset and calls the hit action. The request passes through VCO hit, then VCO deliver and is sent to the requesting client. You can see here that on a cache hit, no request is made to the origin, VCO backend fetch and VCO backend response is never called. It is important to understand that Varnish has some built-in logic under the hood that is always present and running. This is called built-in VCO, and if you do not call an action within a subroutine, then the request will fall through to this built-in logic. This is both good and bad. Good in the sense that the built-in VCO is built with a very purest view and should function as long as your web application is set up correctly to use the correct response headers for each request. And bad because web applications are rarely set up correctly to allow this purest approach. Also, the built-in VCO is very conservative in its caching approach. Any cookies on the site will break cache. So more often than not, you will need to work around this built-in VCO logic rather than take advantage of it. Either way, you will need to know that this built-in logic exists, especially when you're trying to debug. I will leave a link in the video description where you can find this code. Now let's get into some code. For this exercise, I've just set up a basic site using an Amazon S3 bucket. I've called the site www.varnishdemo.com. I've then created an application in Section IO for the site using Varnish 5.12. I have set up Section IO to point at the origin S3 bucket and then pointed the site's DNS record at the Section IO platform. So now when you're on the site, open Chrome DevTools. Go to the network tab and the HTML document request. We can see that the web server is S3. We can see section IO headers and varnish headers. In this exercise, we wish to add a custom header here. Head to the section IO portal, then go to advanced config. From there, select varnish, then default VCO. Now press the edit button and you can start editing default VCO. When you create an application on the Section IO platform, you'll be asked which version of Varnish you would like to use. I've chosen Varnish version 5.1.2, which uses VCL 4.0. The Section IO platform does generate a little bit of code to help you get started, which you can see here, but we're going to ignore that for now. I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see this more clearly. What we want to do is go to sub VCO deliver. This is where the response will pass through before being sent to the requesting client. Let's go and add a response header of X test with the value hello world. Once that's complete, hit save along with a commit message. The section IO platform will perform a validation on your code to make sure there are no syntax issues before deploying to the global CDN network. This deployment takes 10 to 30 seconds, after which we can come back to our site and bam, we see the new header we've just introduced. Now that I've shown you how to add a simple custom header, let's look at how we can do some simple static caching. We can see that there's an image on this site and we would like to serve this from the cache. Let's get back into default VCO in the section IO aperture portal. For the sake of this demo, I've explicitly set up Varnish to not cache anything by default. That is what the return pass directive on line 52 is telling Varnish. If I removed this line, the underlying built-in VCO would likely just cache static assets by default, provided that the origin sent the correct headers, but that's not what I wanted to show you. We want to explicitly cache images and have a little bit more control. For this tutorial, let's focus on PNG images only. So here in sub VCO receive, we need to tell Varnish to return hash instead of return pass when it detects PNG requests. The easiest way to determine if it's a PNG request is to examine the URL. For that, we can use some regular expressions. What we're saying here with this if statement is that if the request URL contains a .png extension and also accounting for query strings, unset any request cookies and return hash. Now that we have told Varnish to look up PNG image requests from the cache, we need to also tell the cache to store PNG assets from the origin when it receives them. For this, we'll need to go to sub VCO backend response. 
We wish to place some safeguard here so we make sure we cache the right responses. I'm only going to cache responses with status less than 400 so we don't cache any errors. I also want to make sure that the origin hasn't explicitly set private and no cache parameters in the cache control header as we do not want to cache assets that are marked not to be cached. We will also check that the request that generated this response was for a PNG file and that the content type is actually an image. Once these checks are satisfied, we will strip any set cookie headers from the response as we know PNG files shouldn't set cookies. We will also tell the cache explicitly to store this asset for 24 hours and then call return deliver. And for all other assets, we will mark them as uncacheable and remember that decision for 120 seconds. After this, we'll commit the changes along with the commit message. Again, the section IO platform will do a syntax check and then deploy globally. This should take roughly 10 to 30 seconds. Now we can go back to our site and refresh a few times and look up the image request in the network tab. Now we can see an H header greater than zero, which indicates that this was served from cache. And that is how you set up caching for PNG assets. In this video, we covered the basics of varnish flow, showing you how to add a custom header, as well as set up explicit caching for certain static assets. If you have any questions on varnish or how to use the section IO platform, please post your questions to community.section.io. Thank you for watching.